Ryan will kick it deep. Keelan Robinson and Savion Redder deep for Texas. Sixth all-time meeting between the two schools. The last coming in 2014 here in Austin. It'll be a touchback. And so the redshirt freshman from Inglewood, California, who the coaches say has a big personality, is a natural leader, and has that California swag. Malik Murphy, whose hometown very close to Steve Sarkeesian's. In fact, Sark, really good friends with Malik's high school coach, and he was recruiting Murphy when he was an assistant at Alabama. And Murphy signed with Sark just a few weeks after he took the job, and there's that swag we're talking about. He's fired up and ready to roll here this afternoon. That got the crowd excited as well, and he's going to throw it here first down and a great play in the backfield on Jatavion Sanders. Drew Wakely, the free safety, was all over that. A negative play for the Longhorns to start the game. Nice, easy throw. Just want to get Malik Murphy into a rhythm, get some confidence. But Wakely reads that perfectly. Great way to start with a tackle for loss for this BYU defense. So second and 13, play action pass. Over the middle, wide open is Mitchell. And it's a first down to the 39-yard line. And a gain of 16. Linebackers freeze in the second level, middle of the field wide open. Ball placed perfectly out in front for Adonai Mitchell to catch it in stride. Nice strike from Malik Murphy. Was one of two last week after replacing Ewers who got hurt against Texas Tech. Got sacked early in a drive and continued to play. Here's a deep ball. The receiver fell down. There was contact but no flag. Xavier Worthy got tangled up with a BYU defensive back. Fans wanted a pass interference call, but won't get it. Eddie Hecker, the cornerback, it looked like he might have got a little tug around the waist on Xavier Worthy. Contact there led to Worthy going down, down the field. No flag drawn, though, from the contact from Hecker. There's a lot of white jerseys on that throw in the back end there, Dusty. Well, they are not going conservative to start this thing, are they, Tom? No Put the ball in Malik Murphy's hands. Murphy going to dump it off here to Red out of the back. Reds up to the 45-yard line, so a gain of five or six brought down by Harrison Taggart, the Oregon transfer. So third down here and about four for Malik Murphy. Stand in front of the chains. Good down and distance for this playbook to be wide open for Steve Sarkeesian, one of the best play callers in all of college football. Much for Xavier Worthy out of the stack. Third down defense not good for BYU this year. Murphy's pass in traffic incomplete. Intended for Worthy. Jacob Robinson was there defensively to break it up. He's got four interceptions on the year. And the coaches said looking at the film, he could have six or seven. This is a nice job. Man-to-man -man coverage. Jacobson follows Worthy across the field. That pass a little bit inside. And a nice job by Robinson. In good position to get the pass breakup. Good start for this BYU defense to force a punt. Ryan Sanborn punting for just the 18th time this season. Nyberg gets out of the way and it kicks dead right. Did it go into the end zone or did it go out of bounds inside the one? It's a touchback. 55 yard punt, a punt, but a net of just 35. So BYU will start on the 20 yard line and been a roller coaster of a career for Keaton Slovis. Remember him as a freshman at USC? People thought he might be a Heisman candidate. He was first team all Pac-12, but he got benched later in his career. Went to Pitt for a year. Didn't put up great numbers there. Transferred to BYU. This is his 45th career start. And he's accounted for 15 touchdowns this year. 12 through the air, three on the ground, and just four interceptions. He was named the captain. Terrific young man. We spent a good 15 minutes with him. Talked about overcoming the adversity that he's faced in his career after that hot start. Going to dump it off to the fullback. Polo, and he's knocked down in the backfield for a loss by Jade Barron, who is one of their best defensive players. Boy, Jade Barron, so good. He was banged up a week ago. Didn't even know if he was going to play against Houston. It was a tight game. They said second half. He wasn't even taped to play. Goes in the second half, and he winds up making the play of the game on fourth down to help seal the Texas victory. So good, versatile, and as smart a football player as this Texas defense has. He's from here in Austin. 
Second down and 11 after a negative play on first down. Slovis, arm hit, he almost threw an interception, but it was dropped by Anthony Hill. Anthony Hill just keeps getting better and better and better. Zone coverage, reading the eyes of Keaton Slovis, steps right in front and almost has a big interception on the second play defensively. And this is going to be a real key throughout the day. BYU's third down offense has been dreadful, and it's one of the best third down defenses for Texas in all of college football. And we showed you in part why it's dreadful. Third and eight is the average. Third and 11 on the first drive of the game here in Austin. Four-man rush, Slovis from the pocket, long throw, and almost picked off, caught, but out of bounds was Cody Epps. Keaton Crawford almost intercepted it. It's fourth down. Well, big Byron Murphy on the inside does an excellent job getting inside pressure. Gets that rip up high, hits Slovis and delivers his pass, and how about the break on the football? as Crawford almost picks it off. Multiple passes there to start for Keaton Slovis on the hands of Texas defenders. He better be careful. He got off to a start similar at TCU, and they were never able to recover. Ryan Rico is one of the best punters in the country. He's third in punting average at about 49 per game, and this one got hung up in the wind a little bit. Here's Worthy, makes the first man miss. Straight ahead past the 40. as Xavier Worthy. He hits the speed burst, and it's heels to the field. Not a chance for a BYU defender to get him. No one touched him as the blocking was outstanding. And my, oh, my, you give that guy a little bit of daylight, and it's going to be a house call almost every time. Your big plays as a receiver. Nine catches of 20 yards or more. Three touchdowns of 40 yards or more through the air. And then that 75-yard punt return for a touchdown. And Texas with the early lead at home against BYU. Worthy, one of the most dangerous players in college football with the ball in his hands. Case and point. Extra point made by participating universities. Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Dave Pash, Dusty Dvorak, Tom Lugan, Bill, and Andrew Green Muggy late October Saturday on the 40 acres. And Keelan Marion going to take it out of the end zone. He's past the 15. He's got some room. And he's tackled at the 26-yard line by the kicker, Will Stone, as we go to Kevin Agandi in the studio. Dave, we've got a developing story in Lawrence, Kansas. Jayhawks giving Oklahoma everything they got. Daniel Highshaw here, Bugs. Putting the ball in the end zone. Kansas almost 200 yards rushing on the Sooners. Kansas just recovered the ball in a pooch kick as well. So they're up and they got the lead. And meanwhile, number one Georgia trailing in Jacksonville. Slant to the house and the cocktail party is off to a good start. Eugene Wilson to score for the Gators. Dave, Dusty Lugs, back to you. It's not the first time Georgia's had some first half issues. And meanwhile, they haven't put the Oklahoma score up here yet. But this place will erupt. When they do, BYU going to try to run it here, and Robbins is tackled for a loss on the play. Jalen Ford, the leading tackler for the Longhorns. But well, Jalen Ford, just such a good player. Watch him diagnose this downhill immediately. Nowhere for Robbins to go. Another play right at the line of scrimmage. Tackle for loss for this Texas defense. Second TFL already in the second series. And for four, that's eight and a half on the year. He had two and a half last week against Houston. All-America a year ago. Slovis in trouble, and down he goes in the backfield. Tavondre Sweat gobbles him up. Back-to-back -back negative plays. That one a loss of three or four. Well, that's going to be a problem all throughout the day. Tavondre Sweat, all 360-plus pounds of him, just dominant changing the line of scrimmage and that's supposed to be a speed option Slovis didn't even have time to pitch the football this Texas front as good as they've had in a very very long time and really 
from the defensive tackle standpoint, as good a duo with Murphy and Sweat as you'll see in college football. Here we go, third and long again. Negative six yards for BYU. Through almost two full series. Slovis arm hit, dumps the pass off to Parker Kingston. And positive yardage, but well short of the line to gain. So it's going to be fourth down and about seven. This is going to be something BYU is going to have to remedy. Getting themselves in third manageable situations. We were talking with Aaron Roderick, and it's really been the downfall of this offense all season. Both of these opening possessions, they're getting behind the chain. It's going to be tough for them to convert on third down if they're backed up top. Well, yeah, no question, Dusty. And they've been such a strong outside stretch zone team over the years, and they don't even resemble themselves in that regard. Right now, Texas owning the left side of that BYU offensive line. So do they try to kick it? Somewhere else here with Worthy. Do they just try to kick it out of bounds? It's a line drive right at him. He's waiting for it. He's got it on the 20. And much better coverage by BYU, but still a return of about 15 yards. That was a 50 yard punt, but a line drive. 7 0 Worthy. He led the country in pass efficiency, led BYU to a 14-win season, first team ever to win 14 games, offensive MVP of the Cotton Bowl, offensive player of the year of the WAC. Sark graduated from BYU in 1997. Texas going to run the ball here. Jonathan Brooks on first down, bust it to the outside. And up to about the 40-yard line. Well, Sark is still very much a fan of BYU football. In fact, he talks often with current BYU coach Kalani Satake. They're very good friends. Uh, Satake hosted Sark on his recruiting visit. And then Satake went on his Mormon mission, so they actually didn't play together. But they're very close. As uh, Murphy's in trouble here, gets rid of it. His arm is heavy. He floats that one. It's still caught by Jatavion Sanders despite getting belted at the 40-yard line by Ethan Slade. Well, how about the concentration here by Jatavion Sanders? And Murphy under pressure, he gets in as he throws his football. And Jatavion Sanders takes a shot from Slade. Nice job holding on to that football, completing the catch. That was Tyler Batty with the hit. Murphy double clutching of the pass, incomplete intended for Worthy. Garrett in coverage that time. Now Sanders, 17 catches now in the season. It's interesting, we were kind of watching that Malik Murphy's bigger than Jatavion Sanders, and Sanders is a tight end, Murphy's a quarterback. Jatavion Sanders, one of the best tight ends in all of college football. He got hurt in the Kansas game. He was not right against Oklahoma, and they have the bye week, and he was more like himself last week against Houston, and he's almost back to 100%, but one of the key mismatches that Steve Sarkeesian loves to utilize in this offense. On second down and 10, Murphy to throw again. In trouble, and just throws it right to a BYU defender. Picked off at the 40-yard line by Wakely. Inside the 30, Wakely chased down by Brooks to the 10-yard line. I don't know if Murphy ever saw Crew Wakely because he tossed it right to him. There is a penalty marker down on the play. And Jonathan Brooks shaken up as well for Texas after the tackle. During the return, Illegal blindside block, number 31, defense. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, BYU. Well, Jay Hill told us he's going to dial up some pressures, and he brings A.J. Von Pachon off the edge, and 38's going to bail out. As you're going to see, Wakely bails out into coverage, and that's a big mistake by Malik Murphy. He gets pressured. He just throws the football carelessly. Wakely right there with a gift in his hands. And we talk with the defensive coordinator, Jay Hill. You're going to see a lot of different pressures throughout the course of the day trying to do exactly that. Get Malik Murphy uncomfortable. Get him to give some gifts and throw the football to the other team. And that's who BYU's been all year. The 12th interception on the season for this Cougars defense, Tom. Yeah, and some miscommunication there prior to the snap. If you notice, Malik Murphy was trying to get the attention of Xavier 
margin and the ball was snapped suddenly so a, a wreck from the beginning of that play before the snap even began you talked about 12 interceptions to dusty 16 takeaways and all BYU plus 10 that's how they're five and two two and two in conference play winning the turnover battle but because of the block in the back at the gates a long return and now they run the ball with Aiden Robbins and until last week as Robbins gets about six BYU really has struggled running the football but Robbins last week had 49 yards on 16 attempts LJ Martin is banged up had a 55 yard run but got hurt in that game we're going to see a lot of Robbins who himself was banged up early in the season but they feel really good about the 6'3 240 pound transfer from UNLV Here's a completion. Uh, check that. Marion on the pitch down to the 40 gets a first down. What attack these edges, the perimeter, the inside of this Texas defense so stout. Nice job moving the chains and back to Aiden Robbins. It's going to be a real key here today. BYU is going to come in here and establish himself offensively. It's going to be on the back of Aiden Robbins. And you touched on his size at 6'3", 240. He's alone at 1,000 yards from UNLV a season ago. And they saw in the second half and they closed out that game against Tech of what they thought they were getting from this big running back. Texas stacking the box. Sloan is going to throw. And that's picked up at the 35. Intercepted by Gavin Holmes. Bringing it back inside the 30. Terrence Brooks checked that with the interception and the long run back for Texas. Was well, Jade Barrett? Would you need a play? It's Jade Barrett off the edge. Watch him elevate and get his hand on this football to create the interception from Brooks right around the edge. He's going to come in. He's going to get his hands up, jump up, and just get one hand of the football and deflects it just enough right into the hands of Terrence Brooks. And what more can you ask for from this Texas defense after Malik Murphy makes an early mistake? A big play by John A. Barron and Terrence Brooks to get the football back and in prime real estate for this Texas offense. Brooks got a standing ovation from the team last week, not because he had an interception or anything, but there was a situation where a player for Houston committed a personal foul against him, and Brooks didn't retaliate, something that Brooks had been guilty of in the past, but... He made a team play not retaliating, and he got a standing ovation in team meetings on Sunday. Murphy to Worthy, high pass, but pulled in. And Worthy down to about the 22-yard line, so gain of four or five on first down. Xavier Worthy, man, he is such a weapon. Just get the football in his hands. He's become a better route runner. We know about the speed. You obviously have seen that. He's got 10, 500 meter speed all the way back to high school, but he's improved on his route running. Excellent with the ball after the catch, and they move him all around. Go back to when Sark was at Bama. The way he used Devontae Smith, that's similar to the way he uses Xavier Worthy in this offense. Got Gunnar Helm lined up in the backfield. You see him now motioning tight end. Brooks inside the 20 and inside the 15 for a first down for Jonathan Brooks, who's on pace to match what Bijan Robinson did last year, rushing for 1,580 yards. And Brooks didn't make his uh, first career start this year until week three. Since the fourth quarter of Alabama, Jonathan Brooks has taken over at the running back spot. He waited his turn behind Bijan, behind Roshan, flashed when he needed to, and man, he has just been sensational. One yard away a week ago for making five straight 100-yard games. He's a real key piece to this Texas offense. Fourth in the country in rushing yards per game. He'll get a touch here off the left side. Cuts it back into a wall of Cougar defenders, led by Von Pachon. Gain of three or four for Jonathan Brooks, sophomore from Texas, who's becoming more and more of a leader with the touches. He said that he's growing more confident, feels that he can lead. In fact, in meetings, he's in charge now of making sure everybody cleans up after themselves. They're not leaving trash on the floor. And when you're productive and you're one of the best players on the field, guys will follow. Fun to watch his growth and maturation, Dave, on and listen to the staff off the field as well. On second and seven, it's going to be Baxter running the ball. I thought there was a, a whistle for a penalty marker. Heard a whistle, but a couple guys stopped, too, yeah. on defense. 
But the play counts. Third down. You saw the speed there. C.J. Baxter, nice job stringing that out by the BYU defense. If they can hold Texas here to a field goal, it would be a huge win after the interception. C.J. Baxter is going to be a great player, guys. He's just a freshman now, but that one-two punch between him and Brooks is going to be really good. He started the first two games of the year, and Brooks took over. Got a timeout, third and four when we come back. Next stop on the F1 schedule, Mexico City Grand Prix tomorrow, 4 Eastern on ABC with additional coverage, ESPN Plus, ESPN Deportes. When Ewers banged up in the game last week, right shoulder injury, missed three games last year with a shoulder. Out today, Sark told us he's week to week, but he's got his headset on. Coaches say that he's been great in the meeting rooms this week, encouraging Malik Murphy as Murphy makes his first career start. And on third down, going to throw underneath, and it's caught for a first down by Brooks out of the backfield. Brooks had eight catches a week ago, and he gets the first down at the four. Nice, confident throw into the flats. A good catch by Jonathan Brooks. Coverage is sitting back on his own coverage there by BYU. Really good choice there by Malik Murphy to dump it down to his running back to get inside the five. How about the confidence from Steve Sarkeesian coming off of that awful interception. He's turned around and said, hey, kid, let's go. Let's throw it. He trusts this guy a lot, Tom. There's no doubt about that. See what they do here on first and goal for the four. And a run, Brooks. And Brooks lunges and is in for the touchdown. Jonathan Brooks, his seventh rushing touchdown of the season. And then Brooks pointing to a tattoo on his arm to honor his late father passed away March of last year. But oh boy, it's excellent, excellent movement off the right side. Christian Jones, they got Malik Agbo in as well, and DJ Campbell. They cleared out, and how about the effort, the toughness for Jonathan Brooks to fight, scratch, claw, and get into the end zone. His father, Skip. Kidney failure at age 49, March 28, 2022. So it's tattooed on the arm of Jonathan Brooks and Roman numerals. He was really close with his dad. They just had an amazing, amazing relationship. As you touched on, Dave, they're super close, meant so much to him. And when he's out there playing and he finds the end zone, it's about more than just him and his team as he looks up to his father and holds up the heart sign. Well, that'll, that'll tug at the heartstrings, yeah. to say the least. What a, what a special player and a special moment every time he gets into the end zone. And that makes it 14-0 Texas. They were in a tight game in Houston last week. And obviously two weeks ago, lost to Oklahoma. Six and one, three and one in league play. The last time they were four and one in the Big 12 to start them was 2018. Will Stone will kick it deep. He may have saved the touchdown Stone on the kickoff after the worthy one return for a score because there was a great return by Marion who's got another crack at it here. He hugged the sideline, didn't step out, but no running room here. Tattooed at the 12 as we go to Kevin in the studio. They want to remind our audience, interesting matchup, WBC heavyweight champ Tyson Fury returning to the ring, taking on former UFC champ Francis Ngannou. There he is, getting ready for his first professional boxing fight. That match on ESPN pay-per-view in Saudi Arabia and Oklahoma in their own little heavyweight battle. Dylan Gabriel going in for the score. They do not get the two-point conversion. Right now, Sooners only up by one against Kansas, under six minutes to go. Back to you. Yeah, that was uh, an, an interception inside the Kansas 15 that put Oklahoma in position to score. Look at the BYU offense so far. Six of the nine plays for zero or negative yards, and then you had the pick by Slovis, the fifth he's thrown this year. First down from the 13. Slovis with time, taking a shot. Jump ball, and the catch is made by Darius Lassiter. Texas territory at the 49 for a 44 yard gain. Where well, the concentration to keep the foot in was excellent. Does he complete the process of the catch through the ground? This ball is moving, moving, bobbing. It's going to be incomplete. I yeah. think they're going to take a look at this and they're going to wipe this off. It's a I really agree. good job by Lasseter to get the foot in. But how about the job?
job the by Brooks the to fight the catch. through after the catch. That plays under further review. And force that ball to ever so slightly jostle. I think they're going to overturn this. It's going to be incomplete. There's an injured Texas player. It looks like it's Brooks. Darius Lassiter, who is the son of the late Kwame Lassiter, longtime NFL safety brother Kwame the second is currently a member of the Cincinnati Bengals and I agree there you see it come out looks like it moves after it hits the ground as well my apologies that's Gavin Holmes in coverage at nine looked like an eight initially but really nice job as he sees those hands come up in that ball he puts it gets in there and he creates just enough contact and disruption for Lasser not to be able to complete the process of that catch that's very well done by Gavin Holmes I want to make sure on the Texas number two After on the review, injured the player. It will be second and ten at the 14 yard line for BYU. It actually was Ryan Watts that was shaken up, number six. He's been hurt, didn't play the last two games, starter at corner. But call reversed. And so they'll move it back inside the 15 yard line. See a little aggressiveness there, Tom, from Keaton Slovis and Aaron Roderick, the offensive coordinator. They had good protection, yeah. and they took their shot down the field. Yeah, and listen, they gotta they got to do something to change the rhythm, rhythm of this thing so they don't find themselves in 3rd and 11, 3rd and 14. They were able to get ahead of the change prior to that interception on the previous drive, but, man, that was a killer to not get that thing completed along the sideline. It's a team that uh, has a win over Arkansas, Texas Tech, but they've also been blown out by TCU. Lost to Kansas as well. Here's Robbins. Long run that time. Trying to get the perimeter against this Texas defense is awfully tough. Maurice Blackwell with the hit. Another negative play. Loss of a yard. It's big. Blackwell's back now. He's healthy. He's banged up early on. Coming out of camp. And he was a projected starter. Great special teams player. And you can see there. Good job setting that edge. Creating a negative play. And here we are once again. BYU backed up. Third. And 12. They cannot continue to live in this third and super long. It's going to be a long day for this Cougars offense. Let's see if Pete Kwiatkowski, the defensive coordinator, brings pressure. A rush four. Slovis from the pocket. Lobs one deep downfield and thrown out of bounds. Intended for Parker Kingston. Barron in coverage. It's fourth down, and BYU will punt again. Well, shout out Barron, just always in the right place. And talking with this staff, talking about his film study habits, there's not a higher football IQ on this Texas defense and probably on this Texas team. And we had a chance to sit with him yesterday. How about the personality of this guy? He's going to wind up doing whatever he wants. He's got an unbelievable smile, just very charismatic. And you watch him on the field, man, there's a lot to like about Jade Barron, especially the way he's playing right now. Got an injured Texas defender. It's Blackwell who made the tackle on second down. Well, tonight, Coach Prime in Colorado taking on UCLA. That's on ABC with kickoff at 7.30 Eastern time. It's also on the ESPN app. After a hot start, Colorado has struggled the last month. UCLA ranked 23rd this week. So Ryan Rico will punt from his end zone. And Xavier Worthy, who has a punt return for a touchdown, is waiting for it in midfield. They kicked it to him last time. This one goes off the side of the foot of Sanborn. It lands deep in the BYU bench. We'll see where it crossed the sideline. The official still walking. He's going to stop at the 40, so a 27-yard punt. So let's listen in on some Texas players talking about their teammate Malik Murphy making his first start and what they think of him. I think Malik has all the self-belief in himself. Um, he's very confident in his arm. He's a very strong arm quarterback. He can get the ball in any spot that he wants to be in. He can hurt you from anywhere on the field or make any throw on the field. I'm just excited for him to go showcase that with his confidence level that he has. Murphy five for nine on the day with an interception. He had thrown eight passes all year prior to today. They start in plus territory, and here's a forward catch, so that's a pass to Worthy, and he fumbles the ball. Worthy got it back, though. It's somehow pinballed back to him. 
and he actually ended up gaining a yard or two on the play. This is well defensed by BYU. Eddie Heckard sets that edge, and he puts the shoulder right on the football. This thing squirts out. Bam! A nice job by Xavier Worthy to locate that ball and jump on top of it. Wow, what are the chances of that? Man, holy smokes. Pretty good awareness there by Xavier Worthy after taking a shot, man. That's, that's impressive. But they end up gaining a yard, and on second down and nine, Murphy. Oh, they've got tipped there. He hits Keelan Robinson, who ends up getting close to a first down. Bompachon may have had a chance to either intercept that or get a finger on it. Somehow got to Keelan Robinson. He's short of the line to gain, though, and so Texas going right up to the ball here. On third down and inches. All-star Christian Jones moved early. Right tackle. Fall start, number 70, offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. So other Dusty than the interception, what have you thought of, of Malik Murphy so far here in the first quarter? He's been very confident with the football, and Steve Sarkeesian not afraid to let him throw it down the field. You know, a layered throw earlier when he was under pressure to Jatavion Sanders, fit it over a, a defender, making a big play down the field. I mean, I think he's been okay, but man, when he gets pressure, he's got to be okay with taking a sack and not putting the ball in harm's way like we saw in the second series. See what he does here in third down and six. We're just going to run it to Baxter. And Baxter puts his head down and gets the first down, driving through a defender. Eddie Hecker, the corner. Nice job. Inside zone, really good block. But left guard D.J. Campbell helps open up that hole. And Tom touched on earlier, C.J. Baxter, he's one of the most talented running backs coming out of high school a season ago. He's got great size, burst, and physicality. Nice run for the first down. Meanwhile, Murphy sends the pick, four for his last four passing. And a fresh set of downs now inside the 30. The run Baxter again. And Baxter breaks a tackle, spinning away from one defender, and then finally brought down to the 26-yard line by Robinson and Mangelson. A missed tackle by Taggart. Pick up a two. As uh, Baxter will lead the game, and Jonathan Brooks checks back in. Final 30 seconds here in the opening quarter. Texas up 14-0. Brooks, a rushing touchdown worthy, a punt return for a score. Second down and eight. Keep it on the ground here with Brooks. Finds some running room inside the 20. And down near the 10 before the tackle is made by Robinson. He first and 10 on the 11th. This Texas offensive line, they are big, they are physical. Starting to lead on this BYU front. This is the end of the first quarter. All Texas through one quarter, back after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. Well, Coach, down 14 here. How do you get yourself ahead of the chains on those early downs to give you manageable third downs? Yeah, it's a long game. You know, um, obviously there's some deficiencies and some, some issues that we need to make better on offense. Punt team's uh, struggling right now, but, uh, you know, we just got to keep battling. And uh, I think we focus on the fundamentals, get things done, we should be okay. All right, thanks, man. Thank you. All right, Tom, you're 8 for Kalani Satake. Hoping his defense can come up with a stop. Texas up 14-0. And a first down, a goal from the 10. As Murphy's hit, the ball is on the ground. And it's recovered by BYU. Isaiah Banya acted out and recovered it as well. Huge play for Satake and company. That's exactly what Kalani Satake was hoping he'd see from his defense to come up with a big play and a second takeaway already. Just working off the edge here on Christian Jones. He's going to get the pressure and he's going to get the ball loose. Actually, wasn't working on Christian Jones. Jonathan Brooks doesn't get over, doesn't get the help that he needs. That ball's loose. And how about while Banya's on the ground to have the wherewithal to grab that ball and bring it in. Huge play by Isaiah Banya in this BYU defense. But can BYU do anything on offense? It was an awful opening quarter for the Cougars offensively with 12 total yards. And try to run it here with Robbins, and he gets mauled at the line of scrimmage. So Andre Sweat in there first. No game. Andre Sweat, gosh, for a guy that's as big as he is, he is so athletic, so mobile. 
working down the line of scrimmage. You can't move the guy. Making plays already here in this ball game. By far the best season he's had as a Texas Longhorn. Well, you made the point the first time we had Texas in a game at Baylor a few weeks ago that that front seven looks like an Alabama front seven, a, a true SEC front. And they're a big problem again today against this BYU undermanned offense. As Slovis delivers a strike to Chase Roberts, come up just short of the line to gain. Gain of eight, tackled by Crawford. Big third down and two here. Finally in third and short. They've been in third and 10 plus for most of the day. Averaging third and 12 on the day. They can live in third and three, third and two like they have here. They give themselves a chance to succeed. Nice job there by Keaton Slovis. They brought pressure and Jet Bush came off the edge clean. Slovis took a shot when he delivered that pass. Nice job standing in there and locating Chase Roberts. Yeah, you throw into the blitz. He knew where he was vulnerable, got the ball out. Third and a long two. Give to Robbins. Gotta be close. Appears to be just short. Alfred Collins in there defensively. If you're BYU, you gotta go, you right? You gotta go for it. And look, Kalani Sataki told us they're coming in aggressive. That, that's who he is at his core. I think that you've got to be willing to roll the dice and try to pick up this first down. Again, they got a running back at 240 pounds. They got five 300 pounders up front. The analytics say to go. BYU is going to call a timeout. Timeout. BYU. This is their first of the half. Timeout on the field. plays in this game but two takeaways including one inside the 15 yard line but so, so far nothing to show for it and on fourth down they do pick it up with Aiden Robbins able to get a little movement up front there a hole for Robbins to run through and it's a fresh set of downs. An important first down there for BYU. Obviously, you give Texas a short field, but they need some kind of confidence to start offensively. It's been slow moving here early for this BYU offense. Look at that. Yards per play. A yard and a half for BYU so far in this game. Keaton Slofus. Uh, Slovis, one-time USC Trojan, one-time Pitt Panther. Hands it off in another negative play, and it's Sweat again. Wrapping up the running back, Robbins, for a loss of two. That is ten plays in the backfield for Texas defensively. Boy, Tavondre Sweat is having a ball game. Watch him get upfield, and also a really good job just setting the edge on the outside by Justice Finkley. Both guys working together. Finkley knocks that up, nowhere to go, and then the penetration by Sweat. Another negative play for this Texas defensive front. Finkley getting uh, playing time because of the injury to Ethan Burke. Sweat has really stepped up this season. 6'4", 360-pound defensive lineman. Playing fake for Slovis. Try to set up a screen to the far side of the receiver, Roberts. And he got belted by Anthony Hill Jr. But it's a good pickup of about nine, so third and manageable. Third and about four here for the Cougars. I like the play call from Aaron Roderick. You know, this is a very impressive Texas defense. They call the screen. They set it up well. Now third and manageable situation for Keaton Slovis in this offense. Chase Roberts. Best receiver on this BYU team up top into the boundary. Isolated. 0 for 4 and third down. Third and four for BYU. Slovis to throw. Fires complete for a first down. Darius Lassiter into Texas territory to the 47 yard line. Got an injured Texas player. It's Malik Muhammad who's in there for Ryan Watts, who got banged up earlier. Get thin at corner. Yes, they are, Tom. Today, Barron might have to move over. He could play all five positions. Yeah, he can't. Ryan Watts already been banged up. We'll see how Malik Muhammad's doing when we get back. 
for Texas was back in 2005. And there's a look at the CFP National Championship Trophy presented by Dr. Pepper. Uh, Texas hasn't won a Big 12 title since 2009, and the crowd erupts here in Austin because they've got the Oklahoma game on the Jumbotron, and Oklahoma just lost to Kansas. And now everybody in league play has at least one loss. The one loss for Texas, of course, was against OU two weeks ago. Slovis to throw, going to get drilled, and the ball is underthrown and incomplete. Going for Parker Kingston. Boy, Keaton Slovis takes an absolute shot when he delivers this football. Jalen Ford coming on delayed blitz, puts him to the turf. Really nice job getting that pressure. And you touched on it. Boy, what a win for Lance Leipold for Kansas, taking down Oklahoma. Knew that was going to be a tough game today. And all of a sudden, this Big 12 race, man, it is wide open. Huge win for the Kansas Jayhawks. Second and 10 for BYU. Slovis to throw again. Little hitch. Now goes to the sideline. Marion down to about the 41 yard line for about six. So you got Oklahoma at four and one. Coming into today. Now, Kansas State, big win today, so the Wildcats are 4-1. and one. Texas, Oklahoma State, Iowa State, all 3-1. and one. Kansas now 3-2. and two. Top two teams make it to the Big 12 championship This game. is going to be a fun race to Arlington. Man, Kansas State is coming to Austin next week. They're playing as well as anybody right now. They're absolutely rolling since that loss in Stillwater several weeks back on a Friday night. New is going to thought it'd be a competitive league coming into the season, and it's been just that. It's Steve Sarkeesian taking a timeout, wanting to look at this third down. And even though it's 14 Texas. nothing, you got to wonder if BYU is in four-down territory timeout at the, the Texas 42. Third down when we come back. Where Oklahoma is ranked when the first college football playoff rankings come out on Tuesday night after this loss, given they almost lost last week and almost lost two weeks ago. Chase Roberts will come up short of a first down, but have to think BYU will, you will go for it on fourth down and two from the Texas 39-yard line. Absolutely. I think there's no question. You got to think coming out of that timeout, Aaron Rodgers working with two downs to get this first down. So Chase Roberts, a big body wide receiver, trying to fight that first down. It's a good job making that tackle, stopping him short of the line to gain. Bring in a, a fullback, Ray Paulo, who's 260 pounds. Got Taase in there as an extra tight end. Fourth down and two. And Slovis will throw, and it's pulled in for a first down inside the 30. Chase Roberts, who's been the go-to target here in the second quarter, picks up 12. With so much cushion out there on the outside, I love this decision. Just going to be a simple slant. Look at that cushion out there by Brooks. He's giving him easy access and a free throw. Good decision there by Keaton Slovis. How about some of these positive yards? I mean, yeah. they've changed it up here. They've been really good on first down, giving him a chance, and then Slovis, man, what a shot. All of a sudden, that, that takeaway from the BYU defense, they gave BYU the football, and they really churn out some clock here, Mr. Ott. Six for his last seven, and a little option. The pitch to Deion Smith inside the 20, and inside the 10. It'll be first and goal for the Colorado transfer named Deion, 19 yards. Boy, Kingsley Suamatia, he's going to have an excellent block out there on the perimeter. He hits Taft right in the chops, and helps allow for the extra running by Deion Smith. I like that play design. They wanted to get on the edges. They wanted to get on the perimeter. The option game, and Deion Smith has that speed to be able to pick up extra yardage on those outside runs. Nice execution there by BYU. Play 13 of the drive. Remember, Texas was going in to score 21-0. BYU forces a turnover. Two fourth down conversions on this drive, and now first and goal from the 10. Can they punch it in? Slovis to the air. Everybody covered. Slovis in. Slovis sack back at the 15 yard line. And Tavandre Sweat in there. Baron Sorrell for the Longhorns. And you see Baron Sorrell, really, it's just a covered sack, though. King Slovis holding on this for a long time. It's going to be a little power 
Rush inside. Looked like he had Isaac Rex right there in the middle of the field, unable to identify, locate him, and it's Baron Sorrell getting him to the ground. Ooh, might have got away with a little face mask there at the end of that. That's what Kalani Sataki is telling the officials, give him an earful, and you're right, he missed Isaac Rex. I just don't think you could see him. He was just sitting right there over the middle of the ball, Tom. The 11th negative play offensively for BYU. On second and goal, Slovis with a pump fake from the pocket. And that pass might have been deflected. Huge hit. It was still caught by Deion Smith. Getting back to the original line of scrimmage and maybe an extra yard. Barron and Hill met at the receiver on defense for Texas. Well, this ball floated forever Whoa. in the air. I think his arm might have gotten hit right as he throws the football. It's concentration by Smith to be able to bring that in with one and secure the catch. That was dangerous. Yeah, it was. Play 15 of the drive, third and goal from the nine. We've seen him go for it twice on fourth down, so it'll be interesting the play call on third down. You come this far, if nothing else, you think you want to get out of here with something. Let's see what they draw up here on third down and goal. Slovis going to throw again. Moving out of the pocket. And Slovis going to run inside the pocket. Somersaults down to the two. Barron with the hit. Now it's fourth and goal from the two. Will Satake go for it again? Well, King Slovis isn't known as a runner, but there's nothing down the field. He lowers the shoulder, gets upended as he's fighting for yards for BYU. This Cougar team showing a lot of fight here on this drive. They've converted on two fourth downs, and best believe they're going to make it. Try to make it three. Well, you mentioned Slovis, not a great athlete, but they just got him on the perimeter on third down. Do they do it on fourth down here? That's not really his game, and BYU going to want to talk about this one. Is they call it a timeout? BYU. Or do you just pound it? We saw that on a fourth down conversion earlier. They brought the heavy package in and ran it up the middle. ESPN's Afternoon College Football on ABC is presented by Tums. Fourth down and goal for BYU. They've had the ball for nine and a half minutes after the second turnover of the game by Texas starting quarterback Malik Murphy. They've converted on fourth down twice on this drive. It's fourth and goal on the Texas two. This is interesting. No Isaac Rex in the game. Their best target at tight end. No Chase Roberts in the game. Their best target at wide receiver. They do have five Lasser down below, but they're in a more heavy run type of package here on this crucial fourth down. And Kalani Satake going to call a timeout. He realizes how important this is. Maybe wanted to get a look at the defense. Maybe change the call here. I mean, you you score a touchdown, you're back in the game. You don't. If Quinn Ewers is in, you're saying, okay, Texas will be able to move it out of the two. It's not a big deal for the Longhorns to be backed up. But with the way Murphy's played, with the two turnovers. Guys, I don't think you can call it. Can you call two tight end, uh, no. timeouts back to back? That's what they're and that, no, and that's what Sark is. That's what Sark was complaining about. Yeah, he was not happy at all. They gave it to him. One left for BYU. One left for Texas. Just outside. Five minutes to go here in the first half. Texas was again going in to score to take a three touchdown lead, but Murphy didn't protect the ball. Fumbled it. BYU has driven down the field. 15 plays, 69 yards, nine minutes, offense, and 52 seconds. So they just now they recognized yeah. the back-to-back -back timeouts, and now they're going to kick the field goal. Well, that's a it's a mistake by Kalani Sataki and his staff. Yeah, it is. Good recognition there by Steve Sarkeesian. So a field goal try here for Will Farron, who is six of eight on the season. This will be just a 24-yard attempt. Try to get something out of this near 10-minute drive. That's good, and BYU is on the board. Tonight, Colorado and UCLA will meet on ABC 730 Eastern, also on the ESPN app. And then Tuesday, 7 Eastern on ESPN, we'll have the exclusive reveal of the first college football playoff top 25 rankings of the season. I'm intrigued to see how Colorado responds after that just debacle of a second half against Stanford. They had a 29-0 lead. Going into halftime, they blow that. Stanford comes back and beats them. They've had a week off. 
as Coach Prime have the Buffaloes ready to roll. That's a good UCLA defense they're going to be going against. And the Colorado defense has been very suspect for these last several games. Should be a good one tonight on ABC. How about the uh, college football playoff rankings? Halloween special? Wonder if the guys up on its studio will be dressed up in, uh, for Halloween. What do you think? There were some announcers dressed up today. I saw that. To <laughs> <laughs> be a touchback, we'll come out to the 25. Let's go to Kevin in the studio. Dave, we are dressed up as an anchor man and a host, <laughs> as well as an analyst. Booger McFarland, Kevin Nagandi here, a Capital One halftime report minutes away. How about Kansas and yeah. what we saw from Oklahoma? Disappointing for the Sooners. Well, they outplayed Oklahoma at the line of scrimmage. They controlled the game, the physicality. What about Bean? Jason Bean making those plays running yes. up and down the field. And when you thought Dylan Gabriel may save Oklahoma, uh -huh. he couldn't. Yeah, Lance Leipold, a phenomenal victory there for, of course, Kansas getting that victory and stunning Oklahoma. Highlights coming your way, plus reaction. Georgia in action as well during this 3.30 window. And Oregon all over Utah. We'll see you at the half. I want to see a dose of Jonathan Brooks here. And here it is on first down. And Brooks past the 30, step arming. Grabbed at the 32, but falls forward an additional couple yards out to the 34. Now Brooks on the year, coming into today anyway, 825 yards. He's added 42 today on six carries. He's averaging seven yards a pop. I mean, let this offensive line go to work and feed your bell cow running back. Wrestle to the ground. Looks to be short by a half yard. Tackle made by Acera. Well, see that Texas offense is over there doing team stretch. It's been so long since they've been on the field. You're exactly right. BYU's had the ball this entire second quarter. Brooks again. Waits, darts forward, and gets a first down. You wonder, too, after the turnovers by Malik Murphy of Sark. Maybe this was part of the plan all along to feed Jonathan Brooks, but you wonder if that had something to do with this as well. I, I think without question. I love the patience. How about him just wait, stop, allow those blocks to set up and move forward and get the first down. Fourth straight touch for Brooks. And rips through the arm tackle of Max Tooley. Out to the 40. He's four more yards for Brooks. Oh, and he's coming off the field. Looks like he's kind of shaken up right arm looks a little gimpy he got dinged earlier in the game too so CJ Baxter will come in second down and six Texas one time on left nearing three minutes to go Malik Murphy redshirt freshman quarterback making his first collegiate start replacing the injured Quinn Ewers who's week to week gonna throw it here to Worthy out of space tackled at the 46 already busted one on a punt return he almost got loose there for more than the 14 yards Safe he picked up say worthy has been an x factor here so far working back inside love the spin move and the burst in the open field man he is electric with football in his hands murphy long throw to worthy again and to the stairs and got grabbed by robinson and thrown out of bounds at the 39 Careful. If you're Xavier Worthy, he tries to go up over the top of Jacob Robinson. Leave your feet, get hurt. So a gain of seven though. And they're inside the BYU 40, approaching two minutes remaining here in the first half. Keep it on the ground with Baxter. Baxter almost busted that one as well just tripped up enough to go down at the 31 and that play ended outside of two minutes so if you're inside two minutes the clock stops on a first down but that play ended outside two so it's running that's part of the new rules this year so that cost Texas about 15 seconds Baxter tackled in bounds clock is going to move here play made by Banya We'll see how Malik Murphy handles this. 
you know, think about it. He didn't start a lot in high school. He was really just a, a one-year starter his last year. He got his team to the state championship game in California and then broke his ankle. And that actually was one of the reasons why he didn't play last year. He redshirted last season only through eight passes this year coming into today. Going to throw it here, and it's behind the receiver worthy and incomplete. I think that ball got deflected off the line. Looked like Mangelson coming in, got his hand up. Why that ball? You'll notice the trajectory on this football. Mangelson comes in, gets his left hand up. That pass back behind Xavier Worthy. Nice job by Mangelson coming in off the edge, unscathed, and getting a hand on the football. Jonathan Brooks back on the field for Texas. Third down and eight. The Longhorns three of four on third down today. Xavier Worthy here in the slot. Throws a deep ball into the end zone. He's got Mitchell, and it's caught. And an I Mitchell with the Texas touchdown. And Malik Murphy's first touchdown pass. What a confidence builder for Malik Murphy after the turnovers, making a big play. With a route here by Adonai Mitchell. Outstanding. A lot of air underneath that football. Nice job by Adonai Mitchell locating the ball and bringing it in. And that's a confidence building type of drive before going to half for Malik Murphy. Texas stops BYU inside the 10, holds the Cougars to three, and then in four minutes they march down the field. Ending in the Murphy touchdown pass to Mitchell. Well, the safety, Raider DeMooney, watch this. Okay, you're gonna see this route. He's gonna bite on it. He's gonna bite on the post, freezes him. And then Adonai Mitchell, gonna be wide open. Excellent job with the route. Freezing the safety. Good identification by Malik Murphy. A lot of air to release that football as Adonai Mitchell adjusts to the ball in the air and gets a big touchdown grab. Think about all the big plays Adonai Mitchell has made over the course of his career. Mostly at Georgia, although he's got six, down, uh, six touchdown passes caught this year. A couple national title appearances for Mitchell, and he had big plays in those games. One of the players that Sark wanted to bring in as he continues to build his culture. He called the win last week a culture win based on the veterans that he has on this team. And Mitchell being one of those key guys. Marion on the kick return won't make it to the 20. I love what Sark said Adnai Mitchell had to say. Referenced last year, the Georgia win at Missouri. And now in a championship season, you're gonna be tested. Give me a gut check. And you're gonna have to just find a way to win this Texas team. And to your point, Dave, there's a real culture in place here right now. They're winning in different ways, and guys like Adonai Mitchell are a key reason why. I feel like there's so much more accountability on this team than there's been in years past, Dusty. Yeah, I, I'm completely with you. Just talking to these players, they feel it. Talking yeah. with Jalen Ford yesterday, Christian Jones, Shade Barron, they've been around for a while. And this team, year three, they are connected, and they're all bought in. Another penalty flag on BYU. Movement by the Cougars. Prior to the snap, false start. Zero offense. It's a five-yard penalty. First down. It's on Cody Epps. And you wonder at this point, I know Kalani Satake said, hey, you know, we're going to be aggressive. But at this point, 49 seconds left in the half. Do you just get conservative here and run it out and go to the locker room and talk it over? Can you try to run the football, be smart? If you could pop a big run, then I think maybe you step on it, but last thing you want is something disastrous to happen in these final 51 seconds. It really could be a lot worse than 21-3. Correct. And now you're backed up on your 10. Slovis has one interception already in this game. Timeout, BYU. This so is BYU final takes its last timeout of the half. Last time out of the half. In and now a quick word from Cheese it I'm RG3's it. See you next time. Right, hey, who changed my name to RG3's it?
Me? It's a great combo. Like college football and cheese it you like? You better believe it. And how will college football fans feel? They're gonna, gonna be, be feeling the cheesiest! Yes! Dave Pash, Dusty Dvorak here in the booth. Tom Lugan built down on the field. We've seen Malik Murphy show one of the great traits that quarterbacks have, being able to forget when yeah. you make a bad play. After the interception, went seven of eight, touchdown. And then after the last fumble, after BYU marched down the field, got a field goal, he drives him down for a touchdown. How do you handle adversity, right? That's a key for any quarterback, really for any football player in a team. And he showed today to be able to handle this adversity very well. It also helps he's got great players around him. Prior to that pass, Adonai Mitchell, a lot of running the football, some quick screens, and then he pays it off with a big touchdown pass. They will just run it here to Robbins. Texas does have a timeout left. We'll see if Sark uses it. BYU will have to snap it one more time. This Texas defense so far here today, fellas, they have been outstanding. 85 total yards for this BYU offense. Well, they put that drive together and ate up a lot of that second quarter, but for the most part, this game's been dominated by the Longhorns D. Robbins. And got a first down, so that will stop the clock to reset the chains. 13 seconds left. He's a big physical runner. When he gets downhill, he is tough to tackle. Well, now you got up to the 25. Do you try to throw it to the sideline, maybe? Try to get a big play here, although the clock is winding on the ready for play. Slovis hit, but he finds Rex. Past the 40, and no time on the clock. That ends the half. So Texas leads it 21 to 3 after the break. Capital One halftime report with Kevin Agandi and Booger McFarland. First start for Murphy. First touchdown pass. 18-point lead. Back after these messages and a word from our ABC station. Our first half making his first career start. BYU will get the ball to start the second half. And it will come out to the 25. Dave Pash, Dusty Dvorak, Tom Luganville down on the field. Mixed bag for Malik Murphy is probably fair. Obviously had the turnovers, two of them, but also had the touchdown pass. Absolutely. Look at the turnovers. Against pressure, he had struggles. Again, there was some issue with motion. The snap came when he wasn't really ready. But it's okay to eat the football and not just throw it to the other team. That's a bad interception. Pressure once again off the edge. And he's trying to make a play. Ball comes out. But he does bounce back. Maybe he could have thrown this a little bit quicker as there's a great route by Adnan Mitchell. But the touchdown gives confidence going into half. Be intrigued to see what this second half looks like for Malik Murphy. Slovis throwing on first down in trouble and throws a deep ball. Incomplete going for Chase Roberts with Ryan Watts who was injured in the first half in coverage. Let's check in with Tom. Well guys, uh, talking to Sark coming out of the locker room, he referenced a lot of things you guys just said about Malik Murphy's first half performance. He said he was frustrated by just not having the football for the vast majority of the second quarter. Wants to get back to running the football. He said his quarterback's got to settle down. When things aren't perfect, go ahead and throw it away. Let the play the next down. He doesn't have to make every play. At BYU, Tom had the ball for 10 minutes. On one single drive in the second quarter as Lassiter makes the catch but is tackled after a short gain. Going to bring up third down and long. Terrence Brooks right there for the stop. And it was a first half dominated by this Texas defense. They had six tackles for loss in that first half. I believe 12 plays go for zero or negative yards for this Texas defense. And BYU offensively trying to do a better job on early downs. That long drive there in the second quarter. They did a better job being in third. And here they are in a third and sixth situation to start the second half. One for seven on third down today. Slovis dumping it off. With no shot whatsoever. Maurice Blackwell read it and ends up making a tackle for a loss at the 26. Well, how about the speed to the football and the recognition? by Blackwell. He's going to see this, and he is out of your screen immediately as he diagnoses this little pass in the flats to Robbins. Excellent job putting your foot in the ground and getting to the football and getting that big 240-pound back on the ground. Nice play by Maurice Blackwell. Dusty, I didn't like the play call, though. I'll give you no. a chance. No, completely with you, Tom. I and mean, that's third and six, and you're throwing it behind the line of scrimmage. Is that the play call, or is that the decision by the quarterback, though? 
worthy is deep. He's got a punt return for a touchdown in this game. And he'll let this one bounce at the 30. And it'll come to a stop at about the 23. 48 yard punt. Kick off your Sunday with NFL Countdown, 10 a.m. Eastern ESPN. They'll have all the early breaking stories, injury updates, and previews of each game. And our Week 8 Monday Night Football matchup, the Lions looking to bounce back after getting beat badly last week to take on the Raiders. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, ABC, ESPN, ESPN Deportes. Lions have been great this year. A day? Until last week, but yeah, it's... Surprising to see what happened last week given how good they've been this year, but still feel like one of the contenders in the NFC for sure. Absolutely. The numbers there on Malik Murphy. Again, we kind of talked about that mixed bag in the first half, and I, I would expect, like Sark told Tom, a heavy dose of the run game in the second half. Makes things easier on Murphy, though he's going to throw here in first down, checking it down to Brooks out of the backfield. And Brooks, boy, fearless that time, just runs through two defenders, Wakeley and Robinson. And so they'll mark him down at the 31. It's a gain of eight. Just like the decision there by Malik Murphy. Took a look down the field. He had Xavier Worthy on the corner route. It was well covered. Just throw your check down and allow Jonathan Brooks to make some positive yardage in the open field. Got a run Brooks here on second and short. Knocked down at the 31. So got back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Third down coming up. And interesting to see too depending on how the game goes you know Sark tinkered with putting Arch Manning in at some point in this game uh, in the first half to give him some live reps in a real situation rather than a blowout time and it really as Sark told us had nothing to do with Malik Murphy and that has been communicated to Murphy that Murphy is the starter but they, they do want to see Manning at some point we'll see if that happens here in the second half Third and two. And Murphy with a high percentage throw. It's incomplete, though, as Worthy couldn't make the catch. Had to go down to the turf and couldn't haul it in. Texas will punt. What's good coverage here by Eddie Hecker? The Weber State transfer came with Jay Hill from Weber State. This is man to man coverage right there in the hip pocket. Making life difficult. That pass out in front. Xavier Worthy could have potentially made a diving catch, but. It's really good job by Eddie Hecker. That's a Xavier Worthy's a tough receiver to stay with in that short area. A nice job by BYU forcing an opening possession punt here in the second half. Doing a little shifting here. Still going to punt though with Sanborn. And he absolutely smokes this ball. Fielded at the five yard line by Parker Kingston. And Kingston dives out past the 15. That was a 74-yard punt. Wow. DKR Texas Memorial Stadium on the 40 acres where Texas coming off uh, last drive stop against Houston a week ago to secure a victory. Moving to 6-1 and one on the season. And now with Oklahoma losing, a win for Texas would tie the Longhorns with Texas and Kansas State atop the Big 12 standings. Slovis back to throw, fires complete, out past the 30-yard line to Marion, and a rare first down for the Cougars, gain of 18. It's a good throw here by Keaton Slovis, stands strong in the pocket, I like the extension by Marion to go out and snatch that football, nice pickup there on first down. The route there by Marion, gets outside the coverage, and... Just the eighth first down, but Texas only has 10. They just haven't had the ball to have more first downs, and they've also had explosive plays. Hunt return for a touchdown, 30-yard touchdown pass as well. Got to run it here with Robbins. Out to the 40-yard line, and really for BYU to have a shot, Dusty, this has got to be the formula, right? Continue to milk the clock, run the ball, and then obviously don't settle for field goals when you get in the red zone like they did earlier. Just have success on first down. Give yourself a chance. And they've done that now in consecutive first downs to start this drive. It's just been disastrous at moments throughout the course of this game, and really this season. But a nice start to this drive here. Came into the day 124th in the country on third down conversion on offense. He struggled, Tom. Struggled mightily. But as you said, good gain on first down five yards. Play action pass. Slova setting up, looking deep, airing it out. Single coverage. And what a catch as Darius Lassiter 
pulls it in. There's a penalty marker down. Lasseter made a big catch in the first half, but he stepped out of bounds and couldn't hang on. This time, he secures it for a gain of 46. What a play here by Darius Lasseter. It's going to be pass interference, which will be declined by BYU. Pass interference, number two, defense. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a first down. It's on the freshman, two, Derek Williamson. Deep pose, play action, good protection. Put the ball up there and let the six foot three transfer from Eastern Michigan go up and make this catch. How about the concentration to go up in the air, fight through the contact to complete this catch. Big time play by Darius Lasseter. This is exactly what BYU needed to get back in this ball game. That would make his late father, Kwame, who was a terrific NFL safety for a decade, very happy. Kwame passed away a few years ago. Collision in the backfield on the jet sweep as Marion and Robbins got involved with friendly fire, and it results in a three-yard loss. So they're even getting negative plays when they're not even being tackled by Longhorns. And this part of this is just Aiden Robbins. You know, he hasn't been there. He's been banged up with the cracked ribs. You know, he transferred. They got a lot of new faces, a wide receiver, a running back. And well, after so much good to start this drive, bad play right there, having your running back tackle your wide receiver. For a TFL. And this happened on the last drive when they got in the red zone. A negative play on first down. Gets them off schedule. Second and 13. So Deion Smith is in now. Lasseter in the backfield as well. Slovis is going to dump it off to Lasseter. Breaks a tackle in the backfield. And it tripped up at the 15 yard line by Jalen Ford. Otherwise, he would have certainly been inside the 10. Missed tackle by Barron. And there's an injured Longhorn. Time out on the field for an injury. And that's Barron who's down for Texas. Five to six, part of the reason Whoa. put Oregon there. And you think about how close that game was against Washington, comes down to that field goal they don't make. But you and I, Dave, got Georgia number one, Michigan two, flip flop and Ohio State. We all have the same six, but a different order. Tom went a little bit against the grain. Be yeah. intrigued to see what the uh, committee does on Tuesday night. So third down and 11. Slovis on the shovel pass got it to Rex, but that was ugly. Another loss on the play, so another field goal try. And fans, don't forget to go to ESPN.com slash Allstate Playoff Predictor to check out your team's chances to make the college football playoff. Which is an absolute disaster there on third down. Big hit by Baron Sorrell on the quarterback, and then Anthony Hill Jr. absolutely destroys Isaac Rex after the catch. Third down woes continue for this BYU offense. And if Farron makes this, I mean, they're one big play away from being down just one score. They're not out of it yet, midway through the third. As Farron drills this one, he's two for two, but you just don't get the sense that. Now BYU's offense can finish a drive at this point. Welcome back to Austin. Time for today's Aflac trivia question. Which game is the final bowl victory of Lavelle Edwards' career? A coach that both head coaches in this game played for, Kalani Satake and Steve Sarkeesian at BYU. So to picture a Sark earlier, leaving his final game. Got to be in a tie in there. That's my hunch. Is this a Jedi mind trick by the truck that it's not Sark and has nothing to do with them, but they know. just thought you would assume that it would be Sark? Possibly. That's why they did that. Saving on red on the return. Gets stepped up and out of bounds at the 22. All right, let's go ahead and uh, answer the Affleck trivia Is question. The Cotton Bowl that he won? That was the 14 win season? Correct. The first 14 win season. Let's see if that's it. College football history led by Am Steve Sarkeesian. Survey says. Led the country and pass efficiency that year and uh, yes hey, hey, hey we got one so again I didn't know if it was reverse psychology to try to get us throw us off the trail but it, it kind of felt like you were trying to throw me off like yeah Dave what were you I mean come on these are, these are getting too easy for you guys I'm a bad teammate yeah, we're partners here come on <laughs> Tom and I were all over this thing all right first down for Texas on its 21 Malik Murphy handing off here. And Brooks able to get a couple yards before he's brought down by Asera. True freshman middle linebacker who's a big time recruit. Was injured in camp but is healthy now. And he, he's got to play a lot more. And obviously they had some great 
middle linebackers in the history of BYU football. He's big, man. He's 6'3", 245. You're starting to see his presence felt against Tech on film a week ago. Bright future for 54. Acera, nice play on the counter, getting Brooks to the ground. Brooks again. Finds a crease across the 30. Brooks past the 40. Brooks in the BYU territory. All the way to the 40-yard line. 38 yards on the ground for Brooks. Well, it's going to be a zone to the left. Zone here, and then we're going to see the bin back. How about the vision and burst by Brooks? Good blocking, working everything left. He sees that cutback lane, and then the acceleration through the hole. Big chunk run. By Jonathan Brooks. And a timeout by BYU. Timeout sure the BYU. There. This is their first of the half. This is a 30 second timeout. So two remaining for BYU. Jonathan Brooks now 87 yards on the day. So he's over 900 yards already in game number eight. And he didn't start until the third game of the season. He's a big time football player, man. I, I really enjoy appreciating watching this guy play. He's got really good patience, vision. No one's going to say he's got great speed. Yet, you know what? He doesn't get caught a lot. He has so many big explosive plays. He's got that physicality he plays with. Good in the pass game as well. He's a well-rounded running back for this Texas offense. And speaking of running backs, they've had a plethora of great running backs in the history of Texas football. We threw a couple on this graphic for you. Of course, you got to go with Earl Campbell, Ricky Williams. Wow, what an absolute superstar. My old teammate, Cedric Benson, the late Cedric Benson. Deontay Foreman had that 2,000-yard season. And B. John Robinson, man. Was he special the last couple years here in Austin? And it feels like Jonathan Brooks right in line to be that next great Texas back. Toted again here, gets upended, knocked off his feet at the 38 yard line by Wakely. Dusty, you mentioned those explosives from him. It's almost like he's one of those guys that's as fast as whoever is chasing him. Yeah. That's right. I mean, again, I don't, nobody would say he's a burner, but I mean, he is the accelerator. He's got some real bursts, man. He's to shard choice of running backs coach. He's done a nice job with that running back room. Brooks had four consecutive 100 yard games of the last week. He finished with 99 in that one. He's open here, makes the catch out in space. Down to the 20. Well, that was a great play by Malik Murphy to get rid of that gain of 17. Murphy is a little banged up, though, after the play. Well, they're going to bring pressure off the edge, and nobody stays with Jonathan Brooks. And it's a good find by Malik Murphy as Jonathan Brooks is leaking out. Big hit there by Max Tooley, 31 off the edge. Murphy back in there, hops up. Murphy, big guy, 240 pounds, 6'6". Six, six. Brooks off the right side. Again, lowers the shoulder on the run. Finishing the run with a defensive lineman, Mangelson there defensively down to about the 12. You can see the hesitation, the patience. Some physicality. He's keeping the football. Second down and four inside the 15. This is about a spot on the field where they turned it over in the second quarter that allowed BYU to get back in the game, sort of. Baxter close to the first down. Looks like he'll be just short. Third down coming up here for Texas. We got uh, that veteran offensive line, all five starters back for the first time in 30 years on uh, the offensive line for Texas. Calvin Banks, probably the, the best of the bunch, left tackle preseason All-America. He's outstanding. He's had a couple of nice pancakes throughout the course of this game. Hayden Connor, the left guard, Jake Majors. They lost Jake Majors against Oklahoma. He was back against Houston. He makes all the calls, big time center. DJ Campbell is fit in there with some physicality at right guard and Christian Jones playing the best ball of his career at right tackle. And they're going to lean on this offensive line. Wildcat here, Dusty with Savion Red getting the direct snap, third and short, and he's able to move the pile all the way down to the five before they blow it dead. There's that physicality we're talking about. Lean on this offensive line, running the football. They love in short yardage into the red zone to put Savion Red in as a Wildcat quarterback. Just that extra push and Savion Red refusing to go down. Got 11 carries on the year for Red, and most of those have come in that situation where he's been the Wildcat quarterback. 
And they're going to do it again here on first down and goal from the six. And again, Red running inside the five. They stack him up at the three. Three and a half minutes remaining here in the third. Texas trying to punch it in and extend the lead. Kansas State comes to Austin next week. Texas still has to go to TCU and Iowa State. And they finish up on Black Friday here against Texas Tech. Beginning of the year, a lot of people pointed to that last game yeah. thinking that might be, you know, for a spot in the Big 12 championship game. It's been a disappointing year for Texas Tech. Just stick with the Wildcat here and save you on red. Football at its finest. Then grounded by Wakeley at the two, so it's going to be third down and goal. I wonder if they're concerned at all about the hit that, that Murphy took, and that's why we're getting strictly Wildcat down here in the fan go. We haven't seen him throw the football since then. Obviously, he's still in the football game. Be complete speculation on, on our part. He appears to be fine, guys. Yeah. Standing right next to Sark and the staff, they don't seem to have any concern over any type of play calling duties as it relates to him. Yeah, multiple tight ends over here on the right side. They like to run behind those guys. Murphy, little half roll, fires into the end zone, almost picked off, knocked away by Garrett on the ball intended for Mitchell. Dangerous throw that time. Now it's fourth and goal. Texas will keep the offense on the field. Pressure up the middle by Sarah. We're going to roll that pocket, but an outstanding job by Camden Garrett. Jumping that route, getting his left arm in and creating the pass breakup. Well, it looked like Mitchell made a little contact, and if he didn't, I, I wonder if that would yeah. have been picked off by Garrett. It didn't have a lot of juice on the ball. He's thrown off his back foot. Fourth and goal. They're going for it here. The analytics say go as well. Dumps it off. Sanders down at the one. What a great play out in space by Jacob Robinson. BYU with a goal line stand. Moving on the field is the runner. But this is just an outstanding individual effort by Jacob Robinson. He's going to fight through this block of Jordan Winnington on the outside. And he's going to make this play. You guys, you can go ahead and roll that. We're not going to be able to chance to see him. He's going to come from out of your screen all the way on the outside. Going to fight through that block and just get enough of the shoestrings of Jatavion Sanders and get him to the ground. Keeping that outside arm free, setting that good firm edge and getting a stop. But Kalani Sataki, he loves to stop by his defense. But can his goal line stand? Can his offense do anything though? That's that's the question. Now they got the stop. Can the offense put together a drive and actually finish a drive? They got to go the length of the field though. Slovis from deep in his end zone on the rollout. And boy, out of bounds was Cody Epps. About four yards out of bounds. Blackwell had pressure. That was interesting. I don't know. <laughs> Cody Epps it was a little bit confused on where he was. Keaton Slovis, I mean, he was a good two yards out of bounds when he caught that pass. Dusty it was a weird concept, too. It was a one man, five yard speed cut out, and no other options for the quarterback. Ball just outside the one, Tom, second and ten. And again, they put Slovis in shotgun. Robbins back there with him. Robbins across the five and tackled at the seven, so that'll give him a little bit of breathing room. Third down at about five here. Blackwell in on the stop again for Texas. Had a good half so far. That's exactly what you need, just a little bit of breathing room. Situation here for Keaton Slovis. Your defense just a huge play to keep you in this thing, keep it to a two score game. Can the offense get something going and extend this drive and go empty here? And yeah, they trust their veteran quarterback, Keaton Slovis, fifth, 45th career start, third different school, third and four. Going to throw from the goal line in trouble. Gets out of there. Oh, the flag comes down. Is incomplete, and if that flag is for a hold in the end zone, it'll be a safety. It's going to be a hold. It's going to be on 61. Vernon Brought looked like he was being held. 
or hands to the face looks like they're calling now. And again, where was the flag though? Right. Is if it's an offensive penalty in the Personal end zone. Personal foul. Illegal use of the hands. Hands to the face. Number 61 of the offense. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. So the penalty, the flag is thrown at the one yard line. So that's where it took place. BYU will have to punt from its end zone. before the end zone. It's a good call by the official. Yep. Never got it out of there, left it in there, but the initial contact to the face before the end zone. So first things first for BYU, you need a good punt from Rico. And the second thing is don't give Xavier Worthy a chance at an easy return. He's got one for a score, which uh, started the scoring in the first quarter. They don't come after Rico. A high punt. And the fair catch made right at midfield, so about a 45-yard punt. Let's go to Kevin Agandhi in the studio. They want to remind our audience, minutes away from the main event in Saudi Arabia, WBC heavyweight champ Tyson Fury returning to the ring in an ESPN pay-per-view crossover fight against former UFC champ Francis Ngannou in what will be his first professional boxing fight. You could purchase this fight now on ESPN Plus pay-per-view. Fury versus Ngannou, something we've never seen before. You get it pay-per-view on ESPN. Back to you. Good stuff, Kev. Looking forward to that. Malik, Malik Murphy back out there. Look at his numbers on the day. 13 of 20, 129 yards. He had an interception, also had a lost fumble. But the touchdown pass as well. 21-6 Texas taking over in midfield, running the ball here with Baxter. And he's going to lose yardage. Bon Bachon, along with Logan Latui, made the tackle. Loss of one. Good job up front. Bon Bachon, as you said, he sets that edge. Latui working down the line of scrimmage. Not really much running room. For C.J. Baxter and BYU create the negative play on first down. You wonder if, if Murphy does throw the ball, could BYU get to him? They have seven sacks all year, and four of them came in one game. Haven't really been close to Murphy, other than on that turnover where he had the force fumble. He has all day to throw here and finds Sanders for a first down grab at the BYU 35. 18-yard game. Oh, I love the catch here by Jatavion Sanders. Big strong hands, elevates, high points that football, and brings it in. Such a talented tight end for this Texas offense. And that's the end of the third quarter. That is the end of the we'll third be back quarter. after these messages. And a word from our ABC. Been able to punch it in there. What are you looking to see out of this offense in the fourth quarter? Well, just being efficient and then finishing these drives. You know, we had a third and two. The first drive didn't convert. We get all the way down there for a third and goal and a fourth and goal from the two and don't finish. So I want to see us finish this drive. All right, thanks, Coach. Thanks, all. Well, Luke, the, the offense has only contributed 14 points. Xavier Worthy had a punt return for a touchdown to start the scoring. And only seven points for the Longhorns since that first quarter. Redshirt freshman Malik Murphy has played the whole game at quarterback. On first down, he'll throw. Steps up, fires a shot into the end zone. Incomplete. Going for Worthy. Heckard, the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week, who had a pick and a fumble recovery for a touchdown against Texas Tech, made the play. And now we see Malik Murphy being a little aggressive on first down, play action, take the shot to your go-to guy. Xavier Worthy had to wait for that just a little bit. Nice job by Hecker to get that left hand up and create the pass breakup. And he's really been a, a really nice addition for this BYU defense this entire season. Transfer from Weber State, where he was an All-America. Played for the defensive coordinator, Jay Hill. He was the head coach there. Running room for Robinson on the cutback inside the 15. And Keelan Robinson fighting for every inch down to about the 10. Gain of 24. What's well, good blocking off the right side? How about you, Tavion Sanders, helping open that hole? And you want to talk about speed, quickness, and explosiveness. That's exactly what you get when you see Keelan Robinson with the football. And meanwhile, Jacob Robinson for BYU is injured, so we get a timeout on the field after that big run by the veteran Keelan Robinson, the Alabama transfer.
take a look at this week's college football rankings brought to you by Verbo. A lot of blowouts here with the exception of Oklahoma, Kansas, and surprisingly, Indiana hanging with Penn State. What a win by Kansas today. Man, nobody's safe. See, that time of year in college football, you better bring your A game. You can and will get beat. How about Oregon? Man. Stomping Utah right now. First down outside the 10. Murphy to throw, backing up. Lobs into the end zone. It's tipped and incomplete. Getting a hand on it was Wakely. Gunner Helm was the intended uh, Sanders rather excuse me the intended target second down to 10 really good coverage here by crew Wakely I mean right there stays with Jatania on Sanders now Jatania Sanders got about four inches on him does a really good job getting that left hand up he's got a little bit of the backside doesn't draw the flag but a nice pass breakup well Sark just told Tom Lugan but we, we got to finish these drives they had a turnover inside the 20, turnover on downs inside the five in the last drive and second and 10 from the 11. On this possession, here's C.J. Baxter getting a carry. He's going to lose yardage, gets slammed to the ground at the 13-yard line. Loss of a couple, Jackson Cravens and Mahe, both there, the two D tackles for BYU. And a nice job setting that edge. Mentioned Mahe inside. This BYU defense, they fought here today. Given everything they can. Jay Hill, new defensive coordinator. It's a different looking scheme and played really well at times here this afternoon. It's third down and 12 for Murphy. First collegiate start, only eight attempts coming into today. Throws it out in space to Brooks, who stays in bounds, lowers the shoulder. Looks like he might have stepped out right there around the two-yard line. It doesn't change the stiff arm. He just gave a Sarah. Previous play is under further review. Look at this. And if that is overturned, it would be fourth down, but not fourth and goal. They can still get a first down at the one, so let's see where he went out. Take a look at this stiff arm here before he goes out. Sarah, we were just talking about, but just bam, just stiff arm him right to the ground. As he runs through Garrett, tough to tell with that angle. Did look like the two, though. If he did go out, it looked like the two, which would mean it'd be fourth and a yard. Oh, that's close. It's very close. Again, almost impossible from that angle to tell. Yeah. After further review, the runner was out of bounds with the ball at the two-yard line. So It'll be fourth down at that spot. And the offense will stay on the field here. They turned it over on downs on the last possession down here. Or is Sark going to change his mind and kick it? He said he wants to finish off drives. I know you kick the field goal, you make it a three-possession game. I think he wants to see this offense finish off this drive. And earlier on the third and two, they threw it. Then it was a third and goal from the two and a fourth and goal from the two. They threw it both times. If they go for it here, I'd be surprised if we don't see this ball given to Jonathan Brooks. Bring it in. Byron Murphy at fullback. Yep, Murphy has a touchdown catch this year. Brooks has a touchdown run today, his seventh of the season. This could be just a push here as well, under center. Timeout, Texas, this is their first of the half. Timeout on the field. So Sark will call for time. Two left for Texas, early fourth, 15-point Longhorn lead. Burn fast and love food back. Use as directed. Well, Bebo certainly just as curious as we are and the entire audience as to what Texas is going to do here on fourth down and one from the two yard line. Again, they got Byron Murphy in there, defensive lineman, and at fullback, one for three in the red zone today. And on the season, 113th touchdown percentage in the red zone. But again, they just need a yard to, to get the first down, two yards for the touchdown. They have Murphy, does they have quarterback sneak in? I can see it. If not, give the ball to 24. It's going to be Brooks. And I don't think he 
got it. Did he fumble the ball as well? He looks like he's short. Cravens and Heckard on the tackle. He's short. Turnover on downs again. What a stop once again by BYU. Get good penetration in the backfield. Nowhere for Jonathan Brooks to go with the ball. It's just an outstanding effort. They changed the line of scrimmage all the way across the front. BYU team not going to give up second time. Right around the goal line, they've come up with a huge stop here in the second half. But time running out, and again, they got to go the length of the field. Still 13 minutes up down two scores. Again, if you could just put together a drive or get a big play, they haven't had any explosive plays really save the one long pass. Trying to run it here. Something they have not been able to do all day long. Aiden Robbins tackled at the line of scrimmage by Jalen Ford. Jalen Ford coming downhill is also Devondre Sweat, who had such a productive first half. And heard it said his name or heard much from him in the second half, but a nice job by the veteran linebacker, defensive tackle, getting some penetration. Back-to-back -back offensive series for BYU inside their own two. Holy smokes. has some room and close to a first down might be a yard short but good run by Aiden Robbins out to the 12 so gonna be third in the yard Let's see if they do it again you touched on it good vision nice little cut back there inside hole opens up Aiden Robbins have one of, has one of his more productive runs in the afternoon just 59 yards on the ground today in this BYU offense Bring in an extra fullback slash tight end and Paulo who's lined up tight to the line movement and multiple flags Texas may have been offside offside defense number 94 five yard penalty that results in a first down it's on Jare Bledsoe so automatic first down for BYU couldn't tell if Hard count there by Keaton Slovis, but Bledsoe just trying to jump that football, get some penetration on third and short. Now they got some breathing room. Out of the 17-yard line. Slovis change of the play. Robbins gets the call again. Upended at the 21 by Taff. Four-yard gain. Showing some vision, nice little cutback. Big 6'3", 240 pound back. Now can they get something going to the passing game with play action? Second down and four. They run it. Room again between the tackles. And Robbins close to the line to gain, maybe short by a yard. Sweat on the takedown, third down coming up. 11 minutes to go. BYU ball down 15. Movement there up front by the BYU offense line. Little sugar huddle. They're getting to the ball quick. Gotta wonder if that Texas D-line's a little tired. Been on the field a lot since the second quarter. Robbins pushing the pile forward and getting the first down out to the 28 before Ford got him to the ground. But that's another good run by the UNLV transfer from Louisville. 6'3", 200. 40 pounds missed the first couple games due to injuries and BYU's going quickly Texas trying to get off the field The official allowed them to substitute Kalani Sataki didn't like that I don't know that BYU substituted and I think that's why he's upset they didn't yeah, right. the Robbins across the 30 out to the 32 they didn't substitute you can't the officials can't hold it and allow Texas to run people off. Right. Otherwise, you can snap it. It would have been 12 down on the field and a free five yards. Now BYU substitutes, so Texas can. Deion Smith checking in. Clock is inside 10 minutes to go. They've run it on every play so far on this possession that started at the two. And you mentioned a second ago, you got to feel like at some point, run the football, play action's coming, and Keaton Slow is going to try to take his shot down the field. Texas might bring pressure here. Here they come. Slovis in trouble backing up. Got to get rid of it. He does, throwing it out of bounds. Being 
chased by Justice Finkley. Third down. He brought that pressure, brought the safety down. Michael Taft coming off the edge. Touched on Justice Finkley. See there, Pete Bukowski. Did a good job mixing it up and bringing some pressure. And still good coverage on the back end. And boy, this third down woes. They have been very real for BYU. Just two for 11 on the day on third down. This is actually good by normal BYU standards this year, being third and six. Right. As opposed to third and eight. Slovis dropping back, looking, firing, through the hands. Oh, receiver picked off. Taft with the interception. Running it back inside the 35. Taft inside the 20, inside the 10, and gets leveled out of bounds. Off the hands of Lassiter and picked by Michael Taft. Well, Michael Taft had a big interception a week ago against Houston. And another big interception here on third down. This ball just too far out in front for Lassiter to be able to bring in. It's the old tip drill. Ball's in the air. Taft well, comes down with an outstanding job with the ball in his hands. After the interception, Michael Taft. Former walk-on from right here in Austin. Always wanted to be a Texas Longhorn. He had opportunities elsewhere, but he wanted to come to Texas. He earned a scholarship a year ago. He's been making plays for this defense and a timely play here in the fourth quarter. Set up Texas at prime real estate. Well, you touched on the story of Taft, his road to scholarship with Texas. Meanwhile, Keaton Slovis, who a few years ago at USC, a lot of people thought that there was great potential there. Bounced around a little bit after getting benched. We'll get a flag down bench late in his career at USC. Number 85, offense. Five-yard penalty, first down. Transfer to Pitt, then to BYU. And he played well this year, but just off the mark. He had Lassiter there, too, at midfield. He missed him too far out in front. I mean, could, could Lassiter have made that catch? Yes, but you got to put that ball on him a little bit better in that third down situation. Texas with a chance to put the game away. Gunner Helm there with a little false start. Be sure you that's not gonna not gonna make head coach offensive play caller Steve Sarkeesian happy. Murphy's pass pulled in. Mitchell bouncing off defenders and into the end zone for his second touchdown. Adonai Mitchell from Malik Murphy again. And Texas may have just put BYU away. Simple slant for Malik Murphy. And good strong hands here by Adnan Mitchell. Reaches up, snatches that ball out of the air. Powers his way into the end zone for a second touchdown of the afternoon. Texas capitalizes after the takeaway. So Malik Murphy with a pair of touchdown passes in his debut, along with the two turnovers. The extra point makes it 28 to 6. Texas all started with the interception by Michael Taff off the fingertips of Darius Ladder. Uh, Lassiter, 47-yard return, puts Texas at first and goal. And the Longhorns, after a penalty on first down, score on the next play. And they've got a big lead now over BYU. 23 UCLA coverage starting 7:30 Eastern. Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. The college basketball season starts Monday, November 6th, with over 275 exclusive games. Sign up today, ESPNPlus.com/slash Big 12 now. So Texas up big, 28 to six, with nine minutes to go after the last touchdown. And Quinn Ewers out this week with a shoulder injury. Will he be back next week? Zark told us it is a week-to-week -week injury. As Marion returns it for BYU. And he will not make it to the 15. Based on what you've seen out of Malik Murphy today, if Ewers is not ready for Kansas State next Saturday and Murphy starts again as we look at the Big 12 standings, and you got five teams with one loss, Iowa State up by 12 over Baylor, so good chance you're going to still have five teams with one loss in Kansas and West Virginia with two. Are you confident that Texas can beat Kansas State with Murphy? Well, he's going to have to play better than he's played today. Um, can Texas beat Kansas State with Malik Murphy? Yes. But if he, you have a couple of turnovers against Kansas State, nerve shuffling two 
quarterbacks in right now. I got a young freshman that's outstanding. Will Howard still playing well. That defense is locked in. Uh, Texas offensively is going to have to function more efficiently and operate a higher level than they have today if they're going to be the Wildcats in here next week. But 30 seconds yeah. timeout. Timeout by BYU. Not sure what happened there, but. But 30 second timeout. To finish your, your question yeah. there, can Texas beat Kansas State with Blake Murphy? Absolutely, they can. But again, you're just going to need to see some improvement from this passing attack. But the way Texas has shown this year to be able to run the football with Jonathan Brooks, play defense, they're going to have a chance to beat everybody on their schedule. But I really think we're going to have to see some improvement in the second start from Malik Murphy next week. And it did seem like after the turnovers by Murphy, other than the long pass, they really started to focus more on running the ball yeah. with Jonathan Brooks. Which you would expect, yeah. right? And that's one of the strengths of this offense. That's kind of who this Texas team is, that offensive line that's been so good throughout the course of the season. Lean on that rushing attack, but... It's going to be an interesting game here next week. I can assure you that. I mean, Texas has scored 30 plus points. The offense, 30 plus points in the first seven weeks with viewers. And obviously under 30 today. And 21 of those were by the offense, seven by special teams. Robbins on the catch. Tom, what do you think? You agree with uh, my assessment of next week against Kansas State? Yeah, I do. And I think, in fairness, with the sample size, you know, this is the first he's really played any college right. football. But he does need to be more consistent. He's got to have a better passing platform. He throws off his back foot too often, the ball lofts on him. Here's Kingston out in space, got a first down. Well, the one thing that the coach has raved about is the type of young man that he is. And he's a natural leader. He takes criticism well. He's got the big personality. And we saw that right on, on the first series of the game when Texas' offense is out there in the first play. He's getting the crowd going. He's dancing, getting ready to play. And, you know, Sark has told us we've had them a couple times now. As Slovis has passed to the perimeter to Kingston again. And he's out of bounds near the 34. Sarks told us that it's been maybe the best quarterback room he's had. I think he's had some great quarterback rooms, not necessarily in talent, but in terms of the personalities. Uh, they much ballyhooed. Uh, Arch Manning has been very humble and a great understudy to both those guys. Quinn Ewers, we talked with him a month ago, and he told us uh, how much he grew in the offseason, and his teammates talked about how his leadership is much better. He's matured drastically. He's helped all week at both of these guys, right? He's been helping today with the headset on to run off the left side. Miles Davis out to the 45. And, and to your point, that quarterback room, you know, Sark called it awesome. He said that room is connected. They complement each other so well and all pushing each other to improve and get better. I mean, that's, that's all you can ask for and exactly what you want. And, and I would expect we see a better Malik Murphy in this first start under his belt. There's Slovis on the run and out of bounds at the 34. Gain of 20, one of the bigger offensive plays for BYU today. Ewers missed three games last year with a shoulder injury. Game against Alabama was banged up early in the season. It's quite a credit to Lake Murphy, too, for not transferring. Yeah. Had opportunities, both with, with Quinn Ewers coming in, then with Arch Manning coming in, coming in. He stuck around, he competed, he earned the number two spot. That's, okay. a, that's a great point because uh, the coaches said that the players really respect him for that because they know they're all tempted to look elsewhere you got nil money out there you got opportunities to play get more reps elsewhere but he stayed here and he stayed committed when when you were decided to come here right and then arch manning comes in plays really well in the spring and to tom and your point a lot of people were coming after him wanted him to come and he said no i'm going to stay right here i'm going to keep working and when my opportunity presents itself i'm going to make the most of it we've seen him here today make his first start he's going to lead texas to a victory. Slovis to throw on second and ten. Lobs it downfield. There was contact, and a flag comes down. It was caught on the redirection by Miles Davis, but out of bounds. But that should be interference on Texas. Pass interference, number 17, defense. It's a 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. It's on Jamon Tap. And with zone pressure here, they drop zip tap in coverage. He's man to man with Miles Davis, the running back out of the backfield. He just never gets his head around. That contact continues. 
through the running back, and it's the right call by the official. Got to get that head turned around, but he never did and continued through the pass catcher. An easy flag for the official. Now one of the things that did in BYU today is its inability to score once it got in the red zone, and here they are again. Big chase to Slovis. It was tight end Isaac Rex couldn't come up with a catch. Again, that looked like a wide throw. And Isaac Rex, who's one of the best tight ends in the country and, and finally healthy, but we have not called his name very much at all today. Only two catches on the day for Isaac Rex. You go back to the 2020 season, whenever he had 12 touchdown catches, just such a red zone target. And that nasty compound fracture gets USC in 2021. And you know, last year wasn't quite the same. He, he's more healthy this season, but he's not been much of a factor here this afternoon. Slovis throwing it to Deion Smith on the edge, and he stumbles. Another negative play. Loss of one. Derek Williams in the area for Texas. Third and 11. That's good pursuit to the football by Derek Williams. The turf monster jumped up and got Deion Smith. He was able to just stay on his feet, make Williams miss. There's a lot of green grass out in front, but another third. Very long here for BYU's kind of summed up this season and summed up this game for the Cougs. You know, BYU's been to five straight bowl games. They got five wins, but their schedule's tough. They got to go to Morgantown next week, Iowa State the week after, Oklahoma the week after that, and then at Oklahoma State to finish out their first year in the Big 12. They have two conference wins over Cincinnati and Texas Tech. Slovis to the end zone and out of bounds. Intended for Darius Lassiter, but again, an off-target ball. You just got to give him an opportunity in bounds. That ball floats on him, and no opportunity for Lassiter to make that play in bounds. Obviously, four-down territory here for BYU, down 22 points with under six minutes to play. Surprised they didn't take more shots on early downs to the end zone. A lot of lateral stuff not getting them anywhere. Got to get to the nine here. Fourth down and 11. Pressure off the edge. Slovis in trouble. Underthrown and nearly intercepted. And it would have been a return probably for a touchdown for Jalen Gilbo. Could not hang on. Ball goes over on downs. But BYU turns it over on downs as we go to Kevin in the studio. Dave, the two-point lead, Texas sticking with Malik Murphy. We saw Arch Manning warming up, warming up, but they're going to stick with Murphy. Probably a lot of handoffs here in the final 5:45 with good friends squaring off at the uh, head coaching spots: Kalani Satake and Steve Sarkeesian. Penalty flag down. Lee Cogbo. False start, number 80, offense. Five-yard penalty, first down. I mean, again, it's not like it's 48-6, but still 28-6, 5.45 left. You, you probably expect a, a lot of run plays here down the stretch. We'll see. Jonathan Brooks five yards away from the century mark. Again, Brooks has been outstanding. He'll get it here. And out to about the... 19 if he gets 100 which uh, we assume he will at this point it'd be five of the last six games he goes over 100 and the one game he didn't was last week against Houston when he had 99 rushing yards although he's been banged up a couple times and coming out. looks to be maybe shaken up here so CJ Baxter will come in Brooks is at 98 yards on 16 carries it's been a physical game boys a lot of guys going on and off the field tonight for both teams. Yeah, no question. That's certainly one thing with BYU. They they will be very physical as they are here at the line of scrimmage, driving Baxter back with uh, Blake Mangelson getting in there and mangling the running back third and long. See what you did there, Mangelson. Nice job. And again, we see Masera, the freshman linebacker, coming downhill, playing the other side of the football. He's been impressive outside of getting stiff arm earlier this quarter and Jaden Blues checking in now at running back third down and 13 four and a half to go in the game just gonna hand it off 
the blue. And he's up to about the 22. I don't think he went down, but then they blew it dead once he landed on a BYU player, got up, tried to run again. So that will take the clock inside four minutes, and then Texas will punt it away. BYU defense not, not giving up here, continuing to fight. A nice stop. Well, I tell you what, Jay Hill was impressive to talk to, their defensive coordinator, and I really think his addition is going to help this BYU football team. Remember Kalani Sataki, Jay Hill, they were on that staff at Utah when they transitioned from the Mountain West into the Pac-12. They know what it takes to take that jump, and BYU obviously first year in the Big 12. I think the players' coaches said it's a more physical league. It's a, it's a faster league. It's obviously a jumping competition, so... We got off to a good start this season. Number 27, offense. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. This will not please the head coach. He was already upset about a penalty earlier, and now you get a delay a game on fourth down. But to your point, last 12 years as an independent for BYU, first year in the Big 12, along with UCF, Cincinnati, and Houston. And obviously, and Oklahoma leaving to go to the SEC next year. Good punt. Kingston there fields it on the 40 spinning away and then finally brought down almost everybody on Texas got a hand on him that time only a seven yard return though here's Kevin Dave AT&T 5G keep advanced connected as we take a look at our multi view which is showcasing a bunch of great games and events across our networks ahead on ESPN how about it Ray Davis of Kentucky taking on number 21 Tennessee that's coming up top of the hour and we've got Tulane up by nine against Rice uh, early parts of the fourth quarter on ESPN 2 and Shador Sanders ready for his first Rose Bowl experience Colorado UCLA prime time on ABC 730 Eastern time back to you. Even though Colorado Kevin has struggled lately, it's still a remarkable season given what happened last year to that squad and the job that Coach Prime has done there in Boulder. Slovis. Here's Marion across midfield. And they'll be in the Big 12 next season. Obviously, we're talking about the additions this year, more additions coming next year with both Arizona schools, Utah, back-to-back Pac-12 -back champs, and, oh. and Colorado. A lot of moving parts these days, and it doesn't feel like it's going to be over anytime soon. <laughs> no one feels comfortable right now. If you're a league commissioner about, unless you're Tony Petiti and Greg Sankey. The ball is out as Slovis was hit backside by Finley, and it's recovered by the Longhorns. Recovered by Bledsoe after the forced fumble by Finkley. Justice Finkley, you know, he's playing much more today. Ethan Burke is out. The first step, arm over, gets, chops the hand. Doesn't just get to the quarterback, but getting the ball out. It's a really good pass rush. Getting that football out. And then the scurry of the ball, jumping on top by Bledsoe. Really nice job there by Finkley. Getting to that arm of Slovis and Texas with another takeaway. Looks like Malik Murphy's going to finish this game, too. But again, the intent likely just to run the ball with 2.41 on the clock and this game in hand for the Longhorns. Here's Blue, tackled for a loss at the 41, so you wonder with Jonathan Brooks looking like he got a little shaken up earlier if they don't want to take a risk, even if it means not getting 100 yards. Talked about this earlier. You got two road games left at TCU at Iowa State. Black Friday here against Texas Tech. Disappointing three and five record for them. But next week, a red hot Kansas State team here. That, that's that game is going to be just phenomenal. Uh, cannot wait for that one. Kansas State playing as well as anybody in the conference right now. Really, the last three weeks we touched on earlier. Avery Johnson. A game and aim is not going to be easy either. But man, next week, obviously, all eyes will be on the injury report to see if Quinn Ewer is able to get back next week against that big matchup versus the defending Big 12 champs. And Blue stiff arming past the 35. And again, you know, Sark in our conversation with him said, look, guys, he, he's week to week. It, it's, right. I'm really hopeful that he'll be back sooner than later, but we really don't know. You, you touched on the games that Texas has coming up. Don't forget about Bedlam next week. Oklahoma 
suffering its first loss of the season today against Kansas now has to go to Oak State. And Oklahoma State's playing awesome right now. Oklahoma State, as much as I'm talking about Kansas State, they took out Kansas State several weeks back on a Friday night. They have had just this resurgence since the bye week playing a totally different brand of football and offense. I mean, it's going to be a fun month of November inside the Big 12, man. Blue gets to the outside, has a first down, turns on the Jets inside the 10 and into the end zone for another Texas touchdown. 34-yard run for Jaden Blue, his first touchdown this season. Texas. As Jaden Blue, the sophomore from Houston, only carried it 23 times and had just one catch coming in today, getting some work here late in the fourth quarter. Scores from 34 yards away. And the extra point makes it 35 to 6. Well, this offensive line, they're going to go behind the left side. Kelvin Banks Jr., Hayden Connor, left tackle, left guard. Going to really do a nice job getting some blocks here. Tight end as well. Just seal this side and take it to the house. Zone all the way to the side. Jake Majors with also a block and the burst in the open field as Jaden Blue finds the end zone for another Texas touchdown. This Texas group's a resilient bunch, aren't they? They just find a way. Yeah. And it's a full team, Tom. Yeah. You know, that, that's the thing about it. That's why, as talented as Quinn Ewers is, and as, as good and dominant as he makes this offense, you can still overcome it because right. it's special teams, it's dominant defense, it's an offensive line and a rushing attack that can handle things. I mean, it's why we thought prior to OU Texas, this might be the best team in all of college football, and even after that loss, they're still right in the thick of things to get to Arlington, compete for a Big 12 championship, and we'll see Tuesday night. They're still right in the thick of it to be one of those college football playoff teams as well. And you didn't sense at all in talking with the coaches and the players that it was really any concern at all about Malik Murphy as uh, Marion gets a return here past the 25. And finally grabbed by the kicker, Will Stone had a hold of the shoulder pad, not the face mask at the 39. But it, it did not seem, seem like there was any concern about Murphy. And I, I think part of the reason is because of everybody around Malik Murphy. 100%. Uh, this, this roster is well built, and they're built inside out. I mean, they're built with a strong offensive line, a strong defensive line, and obviously the plethora of weapons outside and tight end, a wide receiver in the backfield as we're seeing today. It's more than just Jonathan Brooks. It's, look, Steve Sarkeesian in year three, he's got this roster right. And we're seeing, the, combine that with the culture, it's a really good football team. 132 to go, Slovis to the air. Catch is made by Lassiter, first down into Texas territory. So when will that sixth win come for BYU? They've got to go to West Virginia next week. Iowa State at home, Oklahoma home, at Oklahoma State. It'll be tough to get that sixth win, just looking at that schedule, the way West Virginia has played this year. Iowa State yep. playing much better lately, and we already talked about two Oklahoma schools. Mountaineers bounce back today at UCF with a nice win. Especially U UCF was right in the game late at Oklahoma last week. We were there for that nice play by Tapp on the takedown of Davis for a loss. I mean, we've touched a lot on this offense today for Texas, but how about the defense? And, you know, we were talking with Jalen Ford yesterday, talking with Janae Barron, and, you know, talking with Pete Bukowski. They have done, they've just gotten better and better and better each of these three years. And defensively, I mean, they are just really playing at a high level, as we've seen all throughout this ballgame here today. Kingston. And maybe one more play if BYU can get the play off here in the final 30 seconds. Well, Sark told us, look, the, the culture we have here, a lot of that is because of the veterans. The, we have great new players, too, but the veterans bought in. The guys that were here prior to the Sark staff coming in, and a lot of those guys are on the defensive side of the ball. That's exactly right. Quality young talent and an excellent veteran nucleus. It's been a great combination. A buy-in from all of them. Slovis has a completion here in the final seconds to Cody Epps. And that's it. 
The Texas Longhorns moved to seven and one and four and one in the Big 12 for the first time since 2018. They are now tied atop the Big 12 standings with Oklahoma, Kansas State, and Iowa State and Oklahoma State trying to join them as well today. Yeah, just a complete team effort here from Texas. Got started with an Xavier Worthy pump return for a touchdown. Boy, is he explosive. The defense was dominant all day long. And, you know, they had to work through a little bit with Malik Murphy. A couple of early turnovers, but he turned that around.